Who am I? My name is Rami. I'm a software engineer at a fan company. I work for companies like Twitch, Google as an intern, Dell, and I have seen, and other companies that I will not name, and I'm not saying that these situations happen from these companies, but I have seen some very dark things in my day as a software engineer. And I'd like to let you know, is anybody who's expiring, aspiring to be a software engineer, you're gonna wanna stick around for this because I think people paint this industry like it is all sunshine and rainbows, but anytime you work for anybody, there are always going to be downsides. And anytime you make a lot of money for anybody, right? There are gonna be a lot of downsides. And so I would say one of the biggest downsides to being a software engineer is that the hours can be insane sometimes. Like guys, I have literally worked 12 hours in a day for seven days just to get chewed out by my manager. And I think that's pretty rare. Usually, especially if you work for a company like Google, right? Those things do not happen generally, but it still can happen occasionally. And you have to be, you have to be flexible or like, you think, let's say you, you make 200K, you get all the way to the top. Like you think that your life is complete once you get the job, but maintaining the job, making these people feel like you're somebody that they wanna keep around for a long time. That can be a lot stressful. Like the, the act of uh, not losing the 200K, right? That's something that can be tough as well as the work-life balance, right? I talk about you working all these hours and you being stressed out. I feel emotionally unavailable to my family this year. And it's just because my job demands so much attention and energy to, to get right. And that goes into the work-life balance. Like I don't, I have hobbies after I get off of work but during an intense project, I really don't have that, that same time to implement. Uh, I don't, I, it, it, can, it can really take over my entire life. And so there is no balance. <laughs> as well as, I think another thing about the hours and the work-life balance, the journey to getting a fame job can be intense. It's not, you know, nothing can prepare you for working at a company like Google. You, um, or a fan company in general, or Netflix, if you were just straight out of a college, I think working at a startup can teach you about the intensity of being a software engineer and being responsible for services. At the same time, nothing can prepare you. And so, it's kind of an elitist culture, the the act of being a software engineer. It's like, if you could just get at these companies and just work there for a year, then I think at Google, right? I think if most people could just work at Google for a year, I think the majority of people would be, or not the majority, I think a lot more people would be successful. If you look at Google's application rate, like 1%, they might interview 1% of the people that apply. And uh, out of those 1% of the people who do apply, only 1% actually get the job. And I think that is just a lot of fluff and luck. It's not, I don't think, if you look at a book, um, Gail Lakeman, she's the, the, the author of Cracking the Coding Interview. She says, she, she would say most Google engineers will only pass that interview 50% of the time if they had an ample opportunity to study. And that should give you an idea that, you know, these guys feel like, you know, they might feel like they're better than you just because they got in, but it's, it's so there, there's a component of luck, just like to everything. It's not always hard work is what I'm saying. And that leads me into my next point which is another dark 
reality of being an engineer is the politics. What school did you go to? Did you go to MIT? Did you go to Harvard? Did you go to Georgia Tech? These things do play a major role in if somebody gets an interview or a job. Even though there are great talent from, I went to Fisk University and I went to Cornell, right? I definitely see a higher, a higher interview rate after going to Cornell. And I think that there's just, that's part of life. Like branding, going to a top school does probably significant, uh, has a significant probability that you are going to be successful, but that's not the entire story. And I do, I've met some brilliant people who have gone to um, public schools who could probably beat out some of these elite Harvard people just because they haven't had in life. If you look at Jensen Hong, right? He talked about, I don't want to hire anybody from Stanford because you guys have not suffered. You always win in life. Every time you put your best foot forward, you get what you want. Like, and the people who are really successful, the people who start the companies are masters of failing. They failed so many times. People have told them no, and they just keep going. And so the politics do play a part in that, but I do feel like if you work hard, you'll eventually get lucky. And then on top of that, team politics play a part in being a software engineer. Guys, I cannot even tell you how much your manager and your senior engineers play a part in your success. If your manager does not advocate for you, if he does not believe in you, he can really slow your career down. He will not give you projects that are important. He will hold you in a cubicle. And if he feels like, and if you have a senior engineer, right? I'll give you guys a story. So I was working with this guy, not gonna say the company. I was working with this guy. He asked me, he he didn't he didn't say do this work himself. He I told my manager to tell me to do it so it wouldn't feel like it came directly from him. And so I started asking him about it. And I said, hey, can you show me how this stuff got started? Do you have an email? And he was like, he wouldn't let me see the email. He made him an excuse on why he shouldn't see the email, probably because the email told him to do it and not me. So I worked over the weekend. Six, you know, I, I didn't, I would work my Friday night. I was so exhausted. And then I got up and I checked and I did it again Saturday. And so this dude, he took what I did over the weekend, went to the meeting, presented, got the credit, and I worked over the weekend. And that's how sometimes your senior engineers can like really F up your life. Um, yeah, fuck up your your career. I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna be blunt about it because if they if they they know the game, they've been in the game a lot longer than you, and they understand when they did that. Like, imagine how much work he could have did while I was out there doing all the work, and so he turned in two people's work and got credit. And so this dude looks like a genius on paper. Like, oh man, this dude is so productive. But behind the scenes, he is, he, he just takes credit. And you, I have seen people in the industry. I have, I have people who are way high up and they talk about how just being a straight coder and doing the work, you would think you would get a lot of credit for that because you do the hard parts, but that's not the case. People take credit for your work and people as you get more senior and up in the chain, you write less code. That way they cannot blame you for stuff. Writing code is tough. It's very hard to write code that doesn't have bugs in it. And I think that's why the more senior you get, the more senior you become, the less code you write so that you can just manage people. And so some of you guys have, I know for me, right? I thought I was going to come in and show my brilliance and and make this cool app and everybody was just gonna appreciate me and respect me and hand me like boatloads of money, but that's not how this works. It is a political game being a software engineer. I think 
respect. We got some money in the chat. But yeah, it is a very political game, and you gotta you gotta play the game. Unfortunately, I'm not saying like you have to snake people to get to the top. I'm just gonna say being an asshole does help you get to the top. Working hard is a slow and humbling route, but it can be done. Um, and don't give don't forget to mention like the politics of your city. Um, I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis, Tennessee is not known for software engineers, right? We have a negative stereotypical representation of the black male image. And getting jobs when I was in Tennessee was tough. Like people didn't, you know, people had no respect for me. And that's another reason why I wanted to get my master's at Cornell. But yeah, if you are not in a tech city, I live in Seattle, Washington right now. If you are not in a tech city right now, you are playing this game on hard mode. And you might think that moving to another city is just too much, but I'm telling you, it can really, I have conversations with people. I just hang out with people and they give me opportunities to interview with like DoorDash or whatever. And that's the type of stuff does not happen in Memphis, Tennessee, unfortunately. So yeah, so much of your success being a software engineer, so much of your success does not depend on your hard work and ability, but that's life. You'll see that in every industry. And so my advice to you would be seek out mentors, go to programming meetups and befriend people, develop your social skills. A lot of success do comes down to who is willing to vouch for you. We have seen people get jobs at Netflix because they know not because they're a good engineer, because they have um, a specialized knowledge of a new tool and they knew somebody in California that was willing to give them a shot. And so be another thing you could do is be a specialist. Don't just try to master everything. Like when I was a engineer, I was doing I was programming mobile apps. I was doing web apps. I was I was doing open source. You know, I was trying to learn everything. Master a few key tools. Right now, I would heavily recommend Rust and using chat GPT APIs. If you become the best in that, people are going to take notice. And at any company, when somebody has to ask you questions, that's a great sign. And so be a journalist, I think because I have a background with Google, like I always thought like being a journalist was the best thing. But I think there's another part of that story, which is uh, a specialist will get you hired a lot faster, especially if you're in a developing language. And another thing you do, be an indie hacker. Indie hacker is just somebody who makes projects that get the money. If you guys know Peter Levels, he has a website, it's called Remote IO, and all he does is just post remote jobs. And this dude makes probably like thousands, like thousands and thousands of dollars a month. I'm not even gonna give you a high number, but that is real. Like if you guys have a long understand, if you guys understand business, the programming is not that hard. You can pick, or you don't come up like, I've had my, my I had a, a cousin who told me he wanted to make this electrical umbrella that could like jump up in the air and spin around and People could just walk and it just saves them from the rain. I think people have these wild, I'm not gonna, I'm not knocking it, but like people have these wild ideas of what a software engineer could do. And that's why like having a little bit of programming experience and knowing what is realistic, like compare that to like just posting remote jobs on a website. Like anybody, a computer science student with one year of experience could probably do that. And, but they don't understand business. So be an indie hacker, get the side hustles, be a contractor, they're great ways to start. In conclusion, bank companies are overrated. You don't need them to be successful. Don't fall into the trap of wasting years on lead code trying to please them. Find a mentor, 
go to meetups, be social, maybe consider moving to a city like New York, Seattle, California, where the opportunity is more rich, especially if you can find a contracting job. Um, and yeah, so much of success. So much of success depends on your soft skills. So please don't be the asshole who's just really good at one thing because those guys get fired eventually. They have to move around. And that's it. Really appreciate you guys watching. I think we got some people in the chat now. And 